We're gonna go under this hook. We're gonna make this snug. We'll go under this hook, pull up, make a mark on the cable. So we know where to crimp it. Welcome back to the community, everybody. And thank you all for being part of it. This club is growing big and strong, and I'm very, very happy about that. Thank you all who have sent in donations. I really appreciate that. It helps keep the channel alive. And also, if you'd like to leave a donation in a secure way through PayPal, just drop down in the description. The link is there for you. And also, there's t-shirts and stickers if you're interested in helping out the community. Okay, today, we have something pretty special. Uh, I'm going to be doing the rails in my trunk area, but I'm going to hold that off the next week. Dean was good enough, one of our club community members, to send in the process for doing a convertible top installation. I thought that was an amazing thing to do. That took a lot of time for him to do, and somebody else filming him, he knows I don't have a convertible at this time, and he wanted to help out the community. I just think that is so great. I really, really do. This channel has totally caught me off guard. I never expected it to become what it has, and I really appreciate that. And one more thing before we get started here, we hit our 15,000 subs. Thank you all. I appreciate it. And what's that mean? A giveaway. I brought it up recently, I think last week and said when I hit 15,000 subs, I'll do a raffle. So that'll be coming up very soon. We'll be giving away a shirt, a book, stickers. I showed it in one video. So we'll be doing that soon. Okay, so let's watch Dean sit back and relax and watch this convertible top process. And I will be back at the end of the video. Thanks. All right, on the floor, you see all the pieces that make up a convertible top. We'll start over here. We have straps, we have a metal rod for the front bow, we have a metal rod for the back bow, trim piece, screws, springs, cables, some rods we may have to fashion ourselves, some tools, hog ring pliers, big ass staple gun, stainless steel staples. If you don't use these, you'll get rust stains. Quarter pads. I've not seen this type before, but we'll figure it out. Over there, we have rear window ring and rear window. We have chalk line, a lot of razor blades that are very sharp over here. And this covers the rear wooden bow to hide all the staples. Here's our pad. Here's our pad cover. Pad cover does have a front to it. It has a hole, it has a tube sewn in it from one of the metal rods I just showed you. We have the headliner here. This is perforated fabric, vinyl. That's not standard. Standard is crushed cream colored vinyl, but I like this better. We have some wire hangers to pull strings through pockets. We have instruction manual from Trucks Convertibles. Okay. And we have canvas top. That is the outside of the top. And it comes with a cable in the back to hold it in. We have lots of rubber gloves, lots of glue, and lots of glue remover. And that's about it. All right, so most important thing, make sure your frame's in good shape. This frame's been sandblasted and painted with a textured heavy duty black paint that will uh, bite the glue very good. And um, let's take a look at all these little pointy metal prongs here. These have to bend over and hold one of those metal rods in place during the installation. Now I'm missing two. Ideally you fix this and weld new prongs on before you paint it, but that's an oversight. Now, you will probably get away with missing just those two, but ideally you want all these working. The other thing is you want to lubricate all your hinges. They have plastic bushings. Don't damage those. Get those all lubed up. This wooden uh, bow in the back is new from Chuck's Convertible. These guys do rot. Just replace that. It's not expensive. 
the front has the raised part on it. Back here, there's more of these metal tabs we talked about. The ones in the back seem to be in pretty good shape. I think we, I think we have all of them. And um, that's, that's about it for that. Oh, you can also mark the center line of the car and all your bows in advance so you're not struggling to know where the center of things are as you glue everything together. All right, we're going to measure 18 and a half inches from the first listing to the front of the headliner. 18.5. This is the underside. So it won't show. Same thing over here. Put this rod in here. Okay. Right. This has to go in here. Note the center line it has to be lined up with our center line. And this has to get into there. stay center. That is center. Yeah, we're going to fix these so they're pointing down. And we're saying a little prayer to the V-dub gods that we don't break it. point in its life was highly likely. And now we'll make tiny slices in there. Mm. All right, the last three we're not gonna do yet. Okay. No. So we'll leave the last three. Uh, that's weak. Okay. Yeah, that metal's pretty weak.
I do want to get Gets, let me get a light. Hold on. Okay. So that goes over that hook. Okay. And then we'll push this down. that spring to come off. Okay, I'm going to press it down more. This up is down. We're going to go in this hole. We're going to go under this hook. We're going to make this snug. We'll go under this hook. Pull up make a mark on the cable so we know where to crimp it right there that's where our loop has to be crimped okay so we find we took off this uh, hook first the locator pin we applied glue to the back side of the headliner and also to the area of the front bow. And remember, we made a mark at 18.5 inches, and that mark is right here on the other side. So right at the corner is the 18.5 inches, tucked it around. The glue held, but we put the locator pin back in to make sure it would not come loose while we're working on it. And now we're gonna, we've glued all of this, and we've glued all of this, and we're gonna press this down. I'm trying to keep the length the same all the way across the the front here. Thing we did was put a couple hog rings on this strap to the rod then we measured from the center line to the center line front of the wood bow and we put one staple in the strap we did the same on the other side so the strap is so the wood bow is located properly at 22 and a half inches above the back of the vehicle at the center line then we applied glue to the listing and glue to the wood bow, we waited about five minutes and we started attaching it. Now, you should have about one to one and a half inches of listing hanging below the wood bow, which you can see under here. One to one and a half inches is what you want all the way across. And now that we've got it in the right place, we're gonna go ahead and take this out. We'll restaple that later on, on top of the listing. Get that out and get that out of the way. And stretch and apply this.
So I think we're going to put a little more glue on the ends here to get that up. So what will happen when the car is done is a metal plate goes here and all this will get cut off. So you won't see this. The canvas will roll over. All right, so glued the metal bows, glued the listings with cardboard down to protect the perforations. We left about one to one and a half inches of listing hanging down all the way across. And we can now trim off excess listing. And the headliner is pretty much uh, attached. And from the inside, we're looking pretty good. So we, we started by gluing this bow. We had straps in temporarily at the right distance, 22 and a half inches from the top of the bow to here. We started gluing in the center. I took the straps out. I continued gluing. And then um, the straps go in. The distance from the top here to here is 20 and a quarter. There's an indentation in the bow here, and this is a trim line in the car. So that's where you locate this strap, 22 and a quarter. And so we can trim some excess material off here and there now. And the next thing we did was to glue the metal bows and listings, and then we attach the listings there. There should be one to one and a half inches of listing hanging down all the way across. Same over here. We actually did do this. Let me show the inside. Remember, this is the pad cover. So we laid it on top. There's two flaps here, and they hang over the sides. Then in the front, there's a pocket, and the thin metal rod from when we took the top apart goes there. And the thin metal rod will hook on all these hooks. And there's also holes in the end of the front header that the thin metal rod goes down into. Now, the next thing you do is you sneak the long strap under the, the pad cover, around the metal rod, and you hog ring it in place. And you do it where this crevice is located in the front of the front header. So that's how you line it up. That is how you attach the front strap. It's a little complicated because the bag is not fully attached and you're hog ringing the strap under the bag to there, but that's the order in which you have to do it. And then we'll be attaching more stuff. Now what we're gonna do is cut some slits in the tube that the rod is going through to hook them onto the hooks that are underneath, like that. And don't forget the end of the rod does have to plug into a hole there like that then that should come through like that and we're going to continue this process all the way across cutting those slits in here right where each tab is And yeah, it's been described as a two-man job for the reason everything keeps popping out as you go. All right, so we can begin to bend these tabs forward. We'll get that well seated. All right, so I'm gonna bend these forward and then we'll move along. Let me get something to bend with. this down it's, it's grabbing it so that that metal tab is now holding that rod down and we'll do that again here push this down 
push this forward so that that rod won't come out. And we'll do the rest, we'll do that all the way across. Okay, so we attach the straps with hog rings like we said, and then we uh, attached the rod underneath the tabs and bent the tabs down. We fold the pad cover out of the way, bring the strap down, staple it here. Remember to keep your measurement here, 20 and a quarter, 22 and a half. I put nine staples in there. Next step will be, we have to find the little holes that are in here and put these finishing screws that came from Chuck's through the strap into the hole to hold the strap down. And there's two on this side and two on that side. We screwed the strap down after we stapled it back here. We put screw there, there, and on the other side. There's four screws total. There's holes in these uh, metal bows. Just gotta find them and screw that in. Now, there's a tunnel here surrounded with black fabric, and we're gonna put a string through there and attach it to the metal and wood bows. So here's our string. Before we do that, hold on. We want to actually go like this. Then we're going to take the string, put it through this little loop, tape it and push it through that tunnel. On that's a, just a coat hanger. I'm gonna try to pull that through unless I made it too fat. Coming through, strings out. Pull this tight. We're gonna staple, wrap, and staple again. So this is keeping this taut. Staple that again over here. Wrapped it and I'm staple it two more times. Trim that and that's done. All right, we are attaching the window frame now. The window frame gets attached. Uh, there's screws on the back of this metal ring that hold the wood, wood on there. It could be plastic, it could be rubber. But we're going to take one screw out of each side and then put the screw through the strap back into the metal ring. That's what's gonna hold this. Now, measurement's important. So from here to here is six inches on 74 to 79. Earlier years are four inches. And then the other thing you wanna do is this is six, but just make sure that this and this are equal so that it's not cockeyed. In the middle here, I happen to come up with three and it's three all the way across. And that's fine. And then inside here, it's 32 inches wide, so 16 would be the middle. And at 16, you see we're right at the at the middle that was painted on the um, headliner from the factory. So everything right now is lined up. We already put this screw in. We'll put this screw in next, and then the window frame's mounted. All right, so that one screw is the one we took out, and then we screwed it through the strap into the frame on both sides. This car is very strange. Quarter pads, the foam is pre-sewn in there. And there's no loop at the bottom to attach a short rod to hold it in the back. So there's no instructions with this. My guess is staple around the window, hog ring at the bottom, staple across the wood bow. That's how we're gonna do it. This comes like this. I already cut a bit out and made a bunch of relief cuts so we can staple it down without it puckering. All right, let's do it. Quarter pad stapled all the way around. Put a hog ring or two in, and the middle one, I actually went from under and hog ringed it to the main rod that holds the headliner in. Um, I don't like this. 
I like the original one better, two pieces, you glue the foam in, but this is what I was sent. So we're working with this. So anyway, this is in. Well, we stapled across the top. There's gonna be a lot more staples in here when we pull the bag over. So just a couple here now, and um, we'll do the other side. We got, this one was done first, and we came back, we did this one. We put a couple hog rings in, go down here, and we stapled a few staples here, a lot of staples here. And we're ready for the foam pad. All right, we stapled the pad cover behind the ridge on the wood bow all the way across. Then we cut the center part to about two inches or so, glued everywhere. Now we're just gonna fold it over to hide all those staples. We don't want wrinkles. There'll be some more foam on top of this, but let's get as many wrinkles out as possible. sprayed our glue all over the top of the pad cover and we also sprayed a ton of glue on the bottom of the pad itself. We'll let that sit for a few minutes and then we'll put it in place. All right, we put a drape here to block the, the bodywork and we started gluing from the front metal bow back a little more than halfway, that's about as far as this side of the cover will go. Glued all this, then we glued this side of the cover as well. And a lot of glue. We'll let it sit for a few minutes and then we'll pull that over and make it snug with no wrinkles. All right, one half of the pad cover, or what people call bag, is glued. We're gonna saturate this half with glue and also this half of the back cover with glue, I'm going to sit for a few minutes and then pull it over. So while that half of the glue is setting up, we went ahead and stapled this half of the top cover down to about the midway point with a lot of staples. And then we'll trim this off at the staple line. We snapped a line down the center line, which is there. We're gonna trim off this side so the seam is right down the middle. And before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and staple this half down. Okay, so we trimmed down the middle. We created a seam on our snap line. And then we uh, put this self-adhesive neoprene, 1 8 inch there to cover all our staples. Made layers and layers of staples so they won't show through. And now it's time to put canvas top on. Now to do that, we do have to Pull this back a bit. Put the canvas top lip over the top edge here. And then pull the cable in the back and get that all sorted out out back. So we'll show you that in a minute. All right, so we have the, the top back and we have the canvas on. So there's a cable in the canvas. The cable actually gets tucked into this lip and it comes out here and there's a hole in the body it goes through and then i don't know if you can see it but we'll have to figure out how to figure that there is a place in here where that little cable goes through and this nut goes on the end of it to hold it in place and you just tighten that down to tighten that cable when you're all fitted up you can see it's trying to go in there that's where it goes, and then the nut goes on the other side. Let's pull some cable over. There we go. That's not wanting to go in there. Okay, it's in the hole. Put our nut on it. Get the nut started, and then move to the other side. without necessarily dropping that nut. All right, 
That side's in. Cable goes on the top. Same thing on this side. Okay. So this goes in that hole. Goes through that hole. And then we'll put the nut on there. We're just going to get it started. And then we'll seat the cable. All right. All right, we are installing the rear cable, which for the most part is hidden in here. Now you can see a little bit of it there. And um, some tips is that there's extra um, fabric on the underside of this that has to be cut off. That's number one. You have a cable there. It's got a nut on it. I'm holding the cable with the vice grips. The cable comes out of the car through this hole. And then you have to get this. This gets tucked down and that will get screwed into. You'll actually screw the top into there, hide all that. So the thing is you cannot use the cable. You cannot use the cable to pull the top up. You have to use tools like this carpet tool to push it in and then tighten the cable a little bit and push and push. And Actually, what works good is to actually push this bead up. This is kind of the best maneuver because the cable itself will not pull this tight. If you try to tighten this all down just by cranking the cable, you will snap the cable, which has happened already twice during this build. So this seam should line up with the body seam. It's like within an inch, same here. And there's a middle marked on here. It's already got pulled under. There's the middle. So you want to mark the middle there. So, and there's another hole on this side and that has to get screwed to there. So it's, it's going in slowly. We're just cranking the, the cable on both sides, five cranks, one, 10 on the other, 10 on the other, go back and forth, pushing this up as we go. When that cable's totally disappeared and it seems tight enough, that's when we're done putting the cable in. Hey, uh, greetings, Slade's Beatles gang. Um, you know, that video uh, of the top build, I lost uh, my friend who was doing the video for me after about eight hours. It was like 90 degrees out. Uh, so um, the next day I, I did more work on the car, but I just took still pictures. We're going to go over those now. So first thing I want to talk about is the kit itself. Um, take a look at the what they give you for quarter pads. My quarter pads came pre-assembled in fabric uh, and I stapled at the window. I stapled at the top at the rear bow, wooden bow, and I hog ring to the rod at the back. Also, my top pad had these scalloped edges already attached and the metal bows cross at those scallops. And this is the underside of that top pad. However, you may get this, which is top pad with loose scallop edges. You have to glue on loose rear quarter pads, no fabric on them, loose rhomboidal pieces that have to also be attached to that and then covered with fabric. So you could get anything in your kit. Who knows what you're going to get? As long as you have an idea of where everything goes, you'll be in good shape. And I like this uh, ratcheting socket for tightening the cable at the rear of the car. It's much easier than try to get a socket wrench in there. I use the 11 millimeter for my nuts that uh, um, came from Chuck's convertibles, but you may get 10 millimeter. Uh, I think the original were like 10 millimeter, whatever works. <clears throat> okay, so we have the rear cable on. Now we're going to move to the front of the car. And so the canvas uh, folds over the front header and it's going to get glued on there. And then this seam has to be pointing downward and uh, as close as possible to the windshield support. Not loose like this or like wind or water can stuff to get in it. So pay careful attention to that. And when you fold it over, this is what this is what you're going to be seeing. The headliner was installed and the headliner was cut at this little 90 degree angle, which is about here. <clears throat> this portion is vertical 
and then there's a 90 degree angle and then it's horizontal. So the headliner comes over, it's glued and it goes about halfway down that vertical portion and then it's trimmed. So where it overlaps the headliner, this metal uh, trim piece goes and screws in to give a lot of support to all that. Then you have all this hardware that needs to be attached. All this is available new, the screws and the rubber from Chucks if you need it. And that also gives a lot of support so nothing will come loose. And then this canvas here at the front and at the rear quarter folds over and you can see the canvas is there, it gets glued down. And then the side window um, upper seals have this aluminum trim and it gets screwed onto that canvas and into the convertible frame. So none of that's gonna come loose ever the way it's designed. This is just another shot of the convertible top. Everything's on there. And uh, this, this trim piece goes all the way across and is screwed on. Now you're happy, you have all that done and you want to <clears throat> close and tighten your top. However, um, this top is tight. If you really try to force that down and get two people pushing with all their might on there to clamp that down, you might bend your top frame don't ask me how I know that, please. So I suggest, and I've seen it uh, suggested elsewhere, to cut a big slit where your window goes, not too big, but uh, smaller than the actual window frame that's already in there, but to give you some relief here so that you can um, close the top if you wanna do that. All right, let's talk about the cable that runs from the front to the back and the sides of the canvas or vinyl top. So you remember we have a spring in here crimped to a wire. This is the... Uh, this is passenger's front side, and it comes out a hole and then goes into the top. So let's look at some details of that. <clears throat> so this is driver's front side. If you zoom in, you can actually see the spring is there. Cable's crimped to the spring. Spring is attached to a tab that's pushed down to lock it in place. Cable comes out here, and then the cable is just, um, pre-crimped. We already did that in the video, but we attach it to a straightened out coat hanger, push it into the side pocket of the convertible top, and it will come out near the rear quarter. There it is coming out near the rear quarter. This is now passenger side. And <clears throat> passenger side again, rear quarter, cable comes out, goes into a hole in the frame. You can see that hole there, and there's a there's a tab in there in the frame. And we have a picture of that tab here. So you attach that, that crimped loop over that tab, push that tab down so it won't come loose. So you see we're passengers um, rear quarter here. All right, now we're gonna talk about the headliner. <clears throat> Actually, we're not done with this. We're talking about the top still. So there's a trim screw that goes into the body. This is passenger's rear quarter. There's a hole in the body. These are the snaps where the rear boot attaches to when the top's folded down. So you, you have to grab a bit of this fabric and screw that in there. <clears throat> and there's another screw that we'll do later into the frame. But first, we want to staple the canvas or vinyl all around the window trim ring. A lot, you see there's a lot of staples. Just put a row all the way across. You have to do relief cuts here to make this sit flat. I didn't get pictures of that, but I did for the headliner so I can show you what I'm talking about. And here's another shot. It's all um, stapled down. And these are the relief cuts that you have to make to get it to fit. I think I started at the top, went across, and then I just did the rest. Um, now that you've got that window stapled to the top. You can put another trim screw in. This is a uh, driver's rear quarter. So, you know, this was the one that went into the body. This is the one that goes into the frame. Let me fold it up a little bit to get that done. Um, this is that canvas flap, like I showed you at the front quarter. It's also in the rear quarter. It'll fold over, fold over here, get glued, trimmed. And then um, the window seal goes there with the aluminum uh, uh, piece in it and gets screwed there, holding that all in. Now we're gonna talk about headliner. So before you can uh, glue or staple the headliner to the rear window ring, you need to put this trim screw. This is a passenger's rear quarter panel. This is a rear wheel well. 
So that, that trim screw goes there and you can cut all this. Make sure you don't cut it up higher than your carpet's going to go. There's also a plastic, big plastic piece that covers all this. And there's little prongs here and you have to pull the headliner down and capture them on those prongs. And if those prongs aren't there, you can just use screws or whatever. Once you get that in, now you can go ahead and staple, uh, glue and staple the headliner. If Now you can see that trim screw is right here. So if, and you see that it's, it's tight, right? It's taking up all the slack. If you try to do this window first, it's very loose and floppy and you're, you have tons of wrinkles around the rear window. So definitely do that interior uh, trim screw first. Here's all those relief cuts I told you about. I put some uh, painter's tape down before I sprayed glue on that trim ring. And then you make all these relief cuts. You have to trim all this up. You have to staple it and then trim it all up. And okay, we are now done. So you can see the headliner peeking around. It's stapled and glued. So that's ready for the um, rear window. <clears throat> Let's talk about that rear window. Okay, this, this for me is the hardest part of the install. I would say both times I did a top. This uh, rubber ring, I don't care where you get it from. I think they're all difficult to use. I think this is a, um, Chuck's makes one. It's supposed to be extra soft and easy to put in. To me, they're all difficult. But inside uh, the edge that attaches to the car, there's two little lips. I actually trimmed all those out. Um, they say that this could leak. You have to put silicone in there, but it, it doesn't leak. Mine doesn't anyway. So using two people, it totally failed, but using three people, how it goes is you'll, you'll wrap some weed whacker around the outer edge of this rubber in the groove and overlap it. And then one guy on each corner pushing up and down on the window to get the top edge in and someone inside pulls that weed whacker line out both sides and they come down and down and across and the people outside start pushing down in the middle. And after about four tries and a lot of sweat and cursing, you might get that in. <laughs> it's not fun. Here is just a close-up of that um, side window uh, top seal. And there's a, a piece of aluminum in there. You can buy new ones if yours are wrecked. And the screws and everything from Chuck's. And it screws right into the frame. And at the front, the canvas does wrap around a little bit. So that's all I wanted to tell you that I didn't capture on the video. Here's the car at the bug jam with the top down and the, uh, the boot on it. So good luck, everyone. I hope this video helps. I'm certainly not an expert on uh, Volkswagens or convertible tops. I've done two and that's all I know. But uh, hopefully this, this little video um, uh, serves a purpose and helps someone else along the way. Thank you very much. So that was the convertible top installation. And Dean, thank you. That was a heck of a thing for a club member to do, to reach out, get somebody to film them and take their time doing that. Amazing. And a beautiful beetle. Really, really nice. Okay. I am going to get on these rails this weekend, and that film will be up next week. I ordered the rails already. My seal came, but not the rails. So I'm going to go ahead, rip these rails off. I'll film it all because I want to start getting some of the body work done up front here because then I'm going to do the front suspension. I do things in a certain order. Don't ask why. But I hope everybody has an amazing upcoming weekend. I will try to get on chat tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'll put it in the community tab and on the Facebook group if I'm going to be on. I hope everybody's had an amazing day. And remember, turn off the TV. Go in your garage, go take a ride, and have fun.